Hey everybody, welcome back to Tabletop and Hobby Stop. Today I'm going to be giving you my opinions on the Fighters of the Pacific board game. Now that it is released, it is done with Kickstarter. Uh, you may remember I did a few videos for it back when it was on Kickstarter. Well, I actually have it in my hands now. Uh, so we're going to be taking a look at that. <laughs> All right, everybody. Here we are. Um, this is going to be, I'm going to try to keep this video quick. Uh, I laid everything out. I'm kind of doing this off the top. Uh, I got my notes here. So this is everything I received for the Kickstarter pledge. I went all in on everything. I actually went a um, little over and I, and I got two of these mats that you're seeing here. But we're going to go through everything and kind of my thoughts on it and what I think they could do better, uh, what I love. Because I do love this game right off the top. I'm just going to let you guys know. It may not be for everyone, but it's definitely a game for me. Uh, right away, the things that I personally got in the Kickstarter, uh, I got everything they offered. So we have the Battle of the Coral Sea. We have Battle of Midway. We have the Kickstarter Stretch Goals. These are the expansion packs um, that... I believe came with it automatically. But on top of that, I got the play mat. I was early to back, so I actually got this metal initiative coin for free. I think this was like a first 24 hour backer thing. Uh, I'm I'm a huge I'm a huge sucker for metal co metal coins. I have tons of them. I have a Tuskegee Airmen coin sitting over there. I have uh, Liberty coins, all sort all sorts of stuff. What all does this entail though? So what this has is all of these expansion packs have additional scenarios on top of this and they're directed towards Battle of Midway, Battle of Coral Sea. They also come with these extra carriers. I have them packed away in a bag here. They come with uh, these cards. Uh, you see these guys, which come standard with all of your movements and the planes and everything like that. Well, we have our cards individually in case you want to do custom scenarios of each individual plane. On top of that, we have our Leaders of Midway, uh, which comes Leaders of Midway expansion pack, which was a small add-on, but it comes with a couple of hero planes that I have separated from the rest of my planes. I just went to Walmart and picked up some boxes to keep everything. And then with the uh, with the play mat expansion, you get this nice sturdy neoprene mat, and you also get these guys. This this came in a strip about about as long as this mat. I actually had to cut these out myself. It it surprised me when I opened it up and I noticed that I had to cut these out, but it wasn't that big of a deal. It wasn't very hard at all. Just a, a sharp pair of scissors and, and some patience. This is two play mats worth. Like I said, I wanted to be able to expand into bigger battles. Let's go over to what is in the base game. You'll get a few carriers. So you get 17 A6M zeros. You get 18 D3A vals and 12 B5N kates uh, for the Japanese. And then you get 18 F4F Wildcats, 22 SBD Dauntless, and 10 TBD Devastator tokens. You won't get this map. You get these double-sided puzzle style map. Uh, this is your map that you will actually fight on. You get all of the components that you'll need. You'll get your, your activation tokens. You get 95 game tokens. You get your rule book. You get your scenario book. You get your two scoreboards, uh, you get one turn tracker board, initiative board, and four player aids. Now guys, I will say one thing that I really like that they did. This is your, your, your cheat sheet for your planes. On the back is the movements. And you actually get two of those for each force. Hypothetically, if I wanted to have four players, I could give us each one of these and we could refer to them back and forth or I could set this out and then on the other side I set that out and we just have everything right in front of us. I think that was really smart of the designer to do. Also you have kind of your sequence of play and your initiative tracker 
well you can have it vertical as well so however your game space uh, pans out this makes it just a little bit more versatile I think that's it's it's a small thing but it's a nice thing um, same with this turn tracker and also your victory points tracker this is all of the all of the game stuff you get right here um, as far as your your boards your trackers all of that the cardboard is a really really high quality hey guys editing michael here to talk about the art and the tokens so i lost my footage where i had all the tokens up that i was going to show you but no problem i will just reshoot it here in this style and talk about the art for a minute so you can see these tokens that is a very, very solid token right there. Uh, and as far as the art goes, I love the art on this. It's a very simple, bright, distinguished art style. You're not going to miss these on the tabletop very easily. And I love that. They label everything. So there's your SVD. So high altitude side, it's plain. Then on this side, you have the TBD. You have your F4Fs right here. Whoop dropping that you have your f4f boom so everything is nice clear concise art style a6m zeros and then these damage tokens i really like the damage tokens because you can just set your plane on it like that and it's a nice way to show your damage without cluttering the table with markers. And it still looks thematic, it looks nice, it looks like your plane's on fire. I like it a lot. And then I pulled out a couple of the carriers. Of course, uh, the USS Enterprise Big E. And then I have a random ship here that I pulled out, just so you could see what I'm talking about with the art style. Very, very simple, very concise, very clear. I love this art style, especially uh, when it comes to the box art. I love the box art. So I just wanted to make sure that you guys got a chance to see these tokens up close. Uh, one, one trick I did learn from Battle Systems that I don't even think is necessary on this is if you want to, you can take some super glue around the edges of the cardboard and it'll basically become like plastic, but it doesn't seem to be necessary for these. The component quality with everything I have here is actually very nice. I am very happy as far as a cardboard token game goes. These guys did not skimp. They, they did a great job. Beyond that, you're going to get the manual, the scenarios, and then you'll get the solitaire mode. Next, I want to go to the scenarios. See here, it comes with 10 scenarios face-to-face -face, uh, aircraft carrier scenario, um, rescue scenarios, all sorts of thematic scenarios of stuff that you would encounter in the, in the Pacific at the time. Right here is your fluff text. It's about two paragraphs normally. And then you have everything you need to know for the American side, everything you need to know for the Japanese side, and then everything here is visual. Who gets the initiative to start? America. How many turns are we going? We're going 14, and that it's just all laid out. It's it's kind of dummy proof. How many uh, victory points do I get? Five for this, one for that. Five for this, one for that. So really, really dummy proof. And uh, the scenarios are not always going to feel balanced. For me, that's a plus. I like that they're not going to feel balanced because I, I like asymmetric games. I don't mind being the underdog trying to do the best I can. And I also uh, enjoy just being that overwhelming force trying to sweep in and, and take out these scrappy fighters. However, if you're looking for a highly competitive, highly balanced game, uh, not every scenario is going to do it for you. And, and I think that's by design. I think it's very well done. Everything is thematically in line with what you would see uh, that I've played. That is what you get in the base game. Now let's move on to my favorite and least favorite part of the game. So my favorite part uh, has to be this scenario. Now on to my least favorite part is actually going to be the solo rules. Uh, I think for what they are, 
I tried playing through a game. Uh, I tried playing through a solo game, and I don't think it's bad. I don't want to. I don't want to trash the solo mode here, guys. Uh, I have two uh, semi-willing partners in my house at any time, so I can just draft them into playing if I want to play. So my heart wasn't in it when I was trying to play the solo mode. Uh, if you guys want me to, maybe throw it down. I can try to put up a, a solo mode playthrough uh, just to see how it is. But I don't think that it is, I'll say, the smartest experience that you'll come across. The, it, because of the nature of it, the, it ends up being you playing against yourself. You kind of know what the bots are going to do. You try to not metagame, but, but there's going to be some of that. I don't want to knock them too hard on the solo rules. Just for me, not my favorite. So are the expansions worth it? That's that's going to be a question I'm going to answer really, really quickly. Uh, if you kind of like the game, then probably not. Uh, if you really like the game like I do, or if you're a historical buff, definitely I think the expansions add a lot. They've, they've got a few of my favorite uh, aircraft that I get to play. They have a few of the scenarios that I like to go through, you know, following the full Pacific theater all the way through. I think that that's awesome. I think that it makes it worth it. If you're, especially if you're a history buff, if you're an uh, aviation fan, if you're a World War II fan, it's, it's going to be a really fun experience. I, I have to call out Dope Panic and Capsaicin for one of my biggest pet peeves. And and it's right here. Don't give me blank tokens. You you get you get you got the punch. You're doing the thing. You're already printing it. Just just print me some extra airplanes. I know you're going for a certain scenario like the stretch goals and all that. Just give me extra airplanes. It doesn't cost you anything extra, guys. That's just a small gripe. Just one of my pet peeves. I I barely understand it myself. It's fine. Um, I would say, uh, another thing I would have liked a couple more of certain aircraft, but that's just me. That's, just, that's probably just me being a nerd. Uh, I'm not even going to get into all of that going through the deck. I actually really like there's, there's only so much you can do with the planes, but within this type of system, however, they've made it feel very very thematic in my in my opinion i think they struck a perfect balance a guy like me i like my war games i like pulling out the minis i like pulling out all the figures i like the the million cards however uh they have basically what amounts to maybe five five or six special rules there's agile flammable dive bomber level bomber every special rule this is the beautiful thing for teaching. This is the beautiful thing for teaching people. If you're if you're looking to get a friend into wargaming, the beautiful thing is that you can flip through the rule book and that's it. This is a beautiful thing to me. I enjoy reading rule books, but I do not enjoy teaching people super super complex over the top rules seven special right there boom if you're running a bombing scenario you just look at your bombs if you're wondering what the barrages are it's it's a little paragraph if 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 you have to look something up it is super super simple because this rule book is literally four pages four pages deep and one of them is just this uh, reference. It's it's a beautiful thing to teach your friends. Every move you can make, like we showed earlier, right here. You hand this to your friend. Hey, this is everything you can do. It is a little bit fidgety sometimes with the uh, with the planes to to get, but once you get used to the movement, I mean you're off and running. So beautiful system, beautiful uh, starter to show to your friends, and I think that is. So far, my favorite part about this is I can really take this to, to anywhere I want, set it in front of someone, and we can be playing in about five minutes. So let's bring this all together. Now, where do I stand? It's definitely become a fast favorite of mine. Now, is that true for everyone I play with? Uh, no. 
I'm going to be honest, uh, my son loves it. Uh, my wife likes it a lot. I would say maybe her top 15, possibly top 10. It is a quick, fast, fun game, especially if you're into the source material. If you think that $40 to give it a shot, uh, $40 for me is, is totally worth it. However, I understand there's a lot of board games you gotta balance. Uh, is $40 good for you? I would suggest yes, unless if you're not into naval aviation at all. If you guys aren't into that at all, if you could not care less about the source material, if you couldn't care less about uh, planes or warfare or, or anything like that, don't go for it. There, there are games with equally as good mechanics that will get you a little bit faster. It'll get you uh, a little less work on the outside with the scenarios. It'll get you a little bit quicker into gameplay and it'll be a little bit more long lasting for you. However, like I said, if you're into any of that, if you're into World War II, if you're into uh, planes, if you're into combat, if you're into uh, shooty games at all, I think that this is well worth the $40, well worth the $50. Uh, and I would advise that you pick it up. If you're super into the history uh, and they print them, go ahead and go for the expansions. I have been very happy with it. It is probably my most played board game right now. Now, if you guys do like this type of movement style, this type of gameplay, uh, this back and forth two player style, but you're not into combat, uh, I think that one game you could try is Suro. Also, there's a more recent one called Pachacuna. This is another one that I actually like a lot. Uh, the family enjoys this one just for a nice chill day. It does take a little bit of work to set up, but it is um, a fun puzzle. It is a fun mental puzzle to work through. And I would say even though the movement isn't the same as here, it does capture, something about it captured that same flavor for me. So this is definitely a game that I would advise just as a side note. So the current release date that is showing online for this, you can pre-order. It should be out March 31st. I'm not part of the company. I have no idea how accurate those numbers are, but that's all I have for today. Uh, I look forward to talking about this game with you or even Patch Kuna if you guys have any questions on either game, uh, especially Fighters of the Pacific, Fighters of Europe. Go ahead and leave your comments down below. Like, subscribe if you think I earned it, and I appreciate you all for, for joining me, and I will catch you in the next one. Thank you guys for watching Tabletop and Hobby Stop. Click the like and subscribe down below, and we will see you in the next one. Okay. <laughs>